Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley reporting from Washington, D.C. And now the uh, Halloween season has come around once again. We're recording this program on the so-called Devil's Night, October 30th. This is the uh, the night when uh, the arsonists run wild in Detroit. Of course, they're finding fewer houses because a lot of the Houses in Detroit are being demolished as a result of the world economic depression, which is gripping this country and uh, and all others. We're also now one year into the Obama era, uh, at least since uh, Obama's election, since he was able to carry out the first stage of his people power coup or postmodern color revolution inside the U.S. Um, the uh, hangover for that has long since begun, and the, uh, the buyer's remorse, of course, has kicked in quite a while ago. But it's also now um, the, Holly, the uh, Halloween season, and, of course, the most uh, popular costume this time of year is the zombie banker. Let's see if we can hear a little bit of uh, this very funny thing by Mark Fiore. Let's see if we can hear it. Just a second. We're coming up. Remember Bobby Boris Pickett? I was working at my bank late one night when before my eyes this financial sight my bank from its slab began to rise and suddenly, to my surprise, this is a zombie bank. Well, you get the idea. The zombie banks uh, to... That's who runs Obama. That's who dictates policy. And we'll talk about new revelations about how U.S. taxpayer money was convoyed to Goldman Sachs under the orders of tiny Tim Geithner, at that time the head of the New York Fed, and this time around the Secretary of the Treasury in the Obama regime. And we know he's got three names on his speed dialing list, Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan Chase, Pandit the Bandit, of Citibank and Lloyd Blankfein of Goldman Sachs, government Sachs, which controls the government. People who are so busy attacking the U.S. government are fools. It's time to attack the owners, the controllers of the U.S. government. Don't, for the, don't go for the cape. Go for the matador. Don't go for the uh, dumb show that they put on for you, which is in Washington. March straight to Wall Street and protest Goldman Sachs. And, of course, it's not just cultural populism, but it's time to... Make them pay with things like the Tobin tax, the reimposition of Glass-Steagall, which would break up that monstrosity there, Goldman Sachs. But we'll get to finance in just a minute, even though this afternoon we've got a, uh, oh, we can call it a Devil's Night mini-crash, I suppose. Uh, the Dow down at almost 240 points at uh, one moment in the afternoon, a lot of uh, fear spreading on Wall Street, and there are reasons for that, having to do with the cap mark bankruptcy last Sunday and also the fact that the Fed is no longer going to be supporting the Treasury auctions. Um, we'll get into our topics in just a minute. Let me just remind people, if you haven't seen my interview with Russia today, this is a question of Jundullah terrorism in, uh, in uh, Iran and al-Qaeda terrorism in general, backed up by the U.S., the founder of al-Qaeda, of course, being Robert Gates, currently running the Pentagon, a Brzezinski man who owes his career to Zbigniew. We've also got Alex Jones' Fall of the Republic. You really want to get your copy of that from uh, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. And for friends in the Russian-speaking zone, uh, I will have an interview coming out in the magazine called PL of Ukraine, which is uh, going to be on the newsstands now in the November issue, November issue of PL Magazine of Ukraine. Uh, this is uh, basically in Russian, but published in in Kiev. Mnienia obozrevyatil, so uh, opinion observer, I guess that means. Uh, that also has it on the Internet if you take a look. So breaking into the Russian-speaking Area, but let's uh, let's focus for a minute now on the principal strategic complex uh, in terms of the activities of the various warmongers. 
And this is, at the present time, the Afghan-Pakistan-Iran combination. And as I just mentioned, we had on October 18th this terror attack by Jundullah in southeast Iran, in the Baluchistan area. And this is the work of this fake, hooked-up CIA secret army called the Jundullah. It's the, the Baluchistan Liberation Front with strong... Salafi Islamist overtones and Baluchistan ethnic uh, uh, overtones. It's a microstate, mini-state movement, therefore bearing all the fingerprints of the Brzezinski faction. And now we've had a, a very busy week in this uh, theater. Uh, large bombs going off in Iraq, killing several hundred people. We've had these interesting revelations that Karzai's brother, is a CIA uh, agent, asset, a drug pusher, and opium merchant who's also on the CIA payroll. So the U.S. invades against the Afghan drug trade at the same time, finances, pays one of the main people involved. Now, of course, that has to be understood in the climate of a pervasive hysteria in Washington on this entire region now. Uh, for the last several weeks, we've been seeing hysteria against President Karzai of Afghanistan. He's a U.S. puppet. He was put in there by uh, UNOCAL Oil Company. That was his big qualification. But as so often happens, today's CIA agent, uh, well, yesterday's CIA agent now turns into uh, a barrier to the new utopian policy coming from Langley and the Pentagon and the State Department. So now they, there's this uh, pervasive hatred of Karzai in uh, Washington, right? He's going to have to go through with this um, uh, election rerun. Larry Johnson over at No Quarter <laughs> points out that Karzai is the new DM. Well, that's what you've been hearing on this program for a couple of months now, that Karzai is being DMized and may soon be found in the trunk of a car, like the former president of uh, South Vietnam and his uh, his brother, the intelligence chief. Remember, Madame Nu was left as a widow uh, as a result of that. That was November 1st, 1963, just uh, three weeks before the Kennedy assassination. Got to think about that angle, too. But the hysteria now extends also to Pakistan. We have this unfortunate, wretched, hypocritical performance by Hillary Clinton in Pakistan, where she goes there and essentially accuses Pakistan of harboring al-Qaeda. And she says, you know where bin Laden is. Uh, he's in your country. Well, why don't you go and get it? Well, how do you know, Madame Clinton, how do you know that bin Laden and the rest of the al-Qaeda people are in Pakistan? If you know where they are, I'm sure you'd go after them, too. What is this Double talk. Anyway, the main point is, as I told Russia today, Al-Qaeda is a secret army. It is the CIA Arab Legion, and uh, bin Laden, of course, is a theatrical troupe at this point. He's, uh, he's anybody's patsy. He's a dreamer, an eccentric, uh, a misfit who was made into the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, public face of this movement. In this uh, performance by Madame Clinton, a wretched spectacle to be sure, she was confronted by some very intelligent Pakistani students. How can we trust the United States? Why are you committing uh, murders on our territory with your infamous predator drones? Right? Who are you talking to? Uh, and, of course, they ask, how can we trust the U.S.? Well, good question, Pakistanis. The answer is you cannot. Back in a minute on World Crisis Radio.